Hi everybody, welcome to guitar class here at Vico. My name is Amanda Kaya and I will be your instructor today. Um, this is uh, your classical guitar uh, class here at the after school programs at Vico on the Vico app. So if you are watching on the Vico app, welcome, good, uh, good evening. We are, uh, if you haven't downloaded the app and you're watching from YouTube, um, Welcome to, this is a live stream class where you can follow along and we learn about music and classical guitar and we learn how to practice and all that kind of stuff. So really follow along with me here. Um, and if you haven't already downloaded the Vico app, which you can download in the app stores, um, that is the uh, Google Play and Apple App Store, wherever you download your apps. And you can find it there, V-E-E-K-O. Love to see you here, um, it's great wonderful app that you can look at all of our cool stuff and if you're on the Vico app and you haven't looked already go check out our socials give us a like and a follow follow your favorite stuff um, we'll be posting on that like kind of like an Instagram so uh, we'd love to see you there commenting and give us your feedback let us know what um, what you like what you don't like you know everything recommendations we're all here for it so we'd love to have your uh, participation that's what this app is for it's for a uh, live stream and we want to be able to participate with those who watch. Um, so there's so many of you out there, I'm sure, that would love to say stuff or want to learn and have different wants and needs. So definitely uh, take the time, give us a comment, give us um, feedback. Even now, you can type now uh, and post whatever you need to. So yeah, that is our app. So today's class, last week we did Gaspar Sons, an entire week of Gaspar Sons, and it was just not enough. We did everything we could. And it still wasn't enough. There's still tons of Gaspar songs to learn, and um, that is the truth. But we're moving on. We're not doing Gaspar songs anymore. We are doing um, Renaissance guitar. So this is before Gaspar songs, just about a hundred years. And even though you can consider some of Gaspar songs stuff reminiscent of the uh, Renaissance time, uh, it is not. Renaissance. Gaspar Sanz is Baroque, technically, but we are going to go to the Renaissance. And the Renaissance is the is so important for so many arts, uh, not just music, but you have um, you have art, like painting art. <laughs> you have dance. You have writings, you have philosophy, you have so much going on in the Renaissance time. This is, we're just uh, exiting the, you know, the medieval times, and if you know anything about the medieval times, they also called the medieval times the Dark Ages. Now, um, that was because they called it the Dark Ages, I guess, because mostly um, we didn't have the, uh, we didn't have the same kind of living style, I guess, it was just, they, I think they could say it for science, really, it was just not that, you know, scientific, it was just a really bad time. Um, not bad, I would say. I'm sure it was good for some people, but let me get my footstool here, and we'll talk about the Renaissance. So Renaissance means rebirth. Uh, that's really important, and there's a lot of wonderful musicians at this time. So for music, it is mostly centered in France because we have the French school of Paul of <laughs> poly poly uh, polyphony and so that means like multiple voices and we're just coming from monophony which is one singular voice we had Gregorian chants and we had uh, you know the, they make those jokes like there's like a ton of jokes about that and that's basically what we're coming from just plain old chants we're coming from that and to instruments polyphony Harmony, uh, I can't say these words today. Um, so we're doing all of that, and a lot of that starts in France. But um, we're going to be bouncing around, and we're going to be looking at... So the guitar was not... I would say it was not popular at all. Maybe it didn't even exist for the most part in the Renaissance. Uh, our first kind of inkling of this guitar was in the Baroque time, where we had the Baroque guitar. But 
Right now it's still a prototype in the Renaissance. So we have the lute, and the lute is just as good, if not better in some ways than the guitar. So the lute is, um, you've all seen one. It has, it doesn't look anything like this, it, except for the fact that it kind of, like, it's like a cousin, obviously. It definitely is a cousin. So you have the rosette here, just like ours, except it's covered, kind of like the Baroque guitar. It's teardrop shaped, and it's got a little rounded back. So let me see if I can, oh, I'm doing the wrong part of the thing here. Let me see if I find a back, the back of it. So here you can kind of see it. Lots of, here you see Renaissance lute. That's basically what it looked like. This is a Chinese instrument, um, not a lute. Let's see. Again, this is a pipa, not a lute. This is an oud, so um, this woman is holding an oud, and that is where the, you see how they look so similar? That's because they come from each other. The oud is the precursor to the lute. Some rules for um, learning this piece. Now, it's really easy. The guitar or the, the harmonies in, in this time period were not so complicated. So um, it's really easy to spell them out. Now, uh, they don't always make sense, the harmonies. Um, in a, if you've been only playing classical music, um, not this early. So you may see a lot of accidentals. And so I'm going to say be very careful of the accidentals. They will trip you up. <laughs> and they're um, sometimes unexpected if you're not used to Renaissance music. And so that's OK. Just be very careful. Um, also, um, you can go chord by chord because the music is not um, going so far away from home. So we're playing an A minor here. And this piece tra stays true to A minor for the most part, and it's not going to travel very far from there. So you can go, we're going to go around a couple of chords, and so we can look at this piece very chordally. We can go from chord to chord. As opposed to looking at the melody and then the harmony, we can actually look at the placements of our left hand by looking at the chords that we're going to. And that's going to help us memorize better, and it's going to help us play better. So let's um, listen to the first part. So we have... So, um, lute music uh, in the Renaissance time is very um, free, very, uh, it's not as strict. So when we get to the Baroque time, we get really, get really strict with stuff. We can become less uh, ornamental and less, um, we're more ornamental, but we get less improvisatory. So uh, don't feel like you have to play this um, so strict. This is very free, very fun, folk, folky music. Um, and if you heard, it's very repetitive. So let's look at this. Here we have this. We don't have a lot of thirds uh, like this in, in, in this time period, so don't it, the chords kind of sound fifthy. Like they have lots of fifths and fourths. They're very open sounding. So let's do a two and a three like that. So we have that leaves our first finger open to play the C natural. And this is the A minor chord. You literally just built the A minor chord with the melody like that. So if you were looking at this quarterly, it'd be really easy for you. You're really just spelling the chords out as you go. So, oh. so we have the A, B, C. I'm just putting my one down and I spell an A minor chord. And then I'm going to jump my fingers down here. Just like that. on the E, which we already have down. So P, 
P1 and open. You have a 1 and an open here as well. So again, you're really just outlining the, the, um, the chords. And you're not playing a B, but this is just so that you can um, locate and kind of, again, choreograph your left hand. So we have... You could just do that with the uh, two down. You don't have to put the whole thing down. But you can gauge where you're going by the fact that you're just jumping over a string. So again. Um, it's the same. Now, you can lift everything at this point and play uh, the melody. So here, we're jumping to a C major chord, which we know, like this. But you're just going to put the C down and play the open uh, E. But knowing that you're going to a C chord really helps you prepare. So you have the E major chord. Because that first note you want to play is a C, and it's right there. And then the same for G. So if you can think in that way, you'll be able to better map your fingers, because usually when you play these chords, you're going to play the notes of that chord. which are just comfortable. I would say four, because it's easier. I would have that first finger ready, because you're not using it at all. Um, but that's my only advice for that, because it's fairly easy. Just make sure your hand isn't close like this, because it's going to make it a little bit difficult to play if your hand is uh, closed onto your um, side. And then we repeat that over and over again. So by playing this piece by itself, you're going to get a lot of practice with that. So And now here's the different parts. So we can go back to chords again. So here's your C major again. Ooh, I didn't want that. repeats. So this is a lot of Renaissance music. Very repetitive. <laughs> but it's really great. It's fun to listen to. I love um, Renaissance music, but it's mostly because you have to improvise on it. So um, if anything, I think the next step, if you really like this piece and you want to play it, but you want to play more of it, there's harder versions of this piece. Um, if you really want to play a harder version of this piece, but this one's the easy one. But you can even play and sing. So we have... practice too. If you can play and uh, sing at the same time, that's a really great practice as well. This is kind of, um, I guess, along the lines of the Renaissance style too. It's a good practice. And if you can do it and play at the same time, extra kudos because that's really difficult. Um, as you can tell by me fudging everything. <laughs> that is uh, the end of class today. That was the Renaissance guitar. Um, and that was the first part of the Renaissance uh, section. So tomorrow we're going to do another piece probably two pieces because we won't have a lot to talk about in the Renaissance time, so we'll probably spend a little bit of time uh, learning um, two pieces and uh, they're really easy and they're really fun. And then on Friday we're going to talk about John Dowland. That's going to be Dowland. That's going to be a really fun class uh, for you to go to, so I really hope that you come to that. It's the more advanced class, of course, I always put my more advanced classes on Friday. Uh, and this one we're going to cover um, a lot about John Dell. I may cover him tomorrow too, so that we can have some more time on Friday. But um, who knows? We'll see what happens. Oh, and I'm no longer doing Saturday classes. Um, those are no longer there. So we just have Monday, Tuesday, and Friday now. My name is Mandy Kaya, and I've been your guitar instructor here at Vico. And uh, I am doing the Renaissance this week, and I hope that I see you um from either tomorrow or my next class and or my class on friday so or at all of them you can come to all of them so yeah i will see you next time thanks for watching don't forget to download the vico app available on the google play store and app store click below